Well, as you can see, I'm back in Iowa. It is November the 2nd. Casey and I last night made a snap decision and decided to move up here to Iowa. It is getting ready to crank up here in the next day or two, so I'm excited. My first rut hunt ever in Iowa, only my second time. I was here a month ago, you know, I shot a doe and a coyote, so I'm pumped. I mean, this is what everybody wants to do. They want to be in Iowa and, and have that golden ticket and in November. So I got eight days. We're going to try to get this thing done and uh, head back to Kansas and see if Casey and I can both knock down a deer there as well. So a lot of time ahead of us. It's going to get cold. Super excited. Can't wait to do it. First night on stand, the nerves are high. My first sit in the rut in Iowa, I'm excited. Don't know what to expect. Anything can step out. I mean, this is the holy land. Saw some smaller bucks and some does in the distance throughout the night. Prime time is here, lights faded, and who steps out but a stud. It did not matter what I did to this deer. I threw a grunt at him, I threw rattles at him. All he would do is look at me. He didn't have any other deer with him, but that kind of told me that I need to leave him alone. He's not coming up here. He only made it to about 130 yards. He had something else on his mind. I left him alone. He walked down to the timber, out of my life. This morning was one of the most unbelievable mornings I've ever had in deer stand. Doesn't matter if I'm filming or hunting, just unbelievable. Deer everywhere, bucks everywhere, does everywhere. And to have an encounter with Deuce, the big deer we had the night before at 10 yards, only to have a limb in the way. There's big deer in the area, the weather's perfect. I'm in Iowa. I'm gonna ride the hole in this stand. What do you think over there? You're gonna kill this morning. Hope so. 10 yards yesterday morning. We're going back to the same stand. We had really good movement in there yesterday morning. Hopefully it'll happen again 
today, that limb that uh, was blocking my way is gone. So if he does that again, he'll be dead. So we'll see, gonna get in the stand and see what happens. Growing up in Michigan, I always had the thought process that you only get one opportunity per year at a buck. And what you do with that opportunity is up to you. But right now, at this point of the trip, I'm starting to think that my opportunities are starting to run thin and tell. Well, wild chain of events just happened. I mean, within the last 45 minutes, we decided to go back in a tiny dancer. We left everything in the tree from this morning. As we're walking to the CRP, I see this tree bouncing. I look over there and there's the big, a big eight that we had two days ago. I don't want to call them the big eight. We're going to name them. We got to name them. We're going to give them a name. Not doing the big eight. How many big eights are out there? He's down there. So we basically belly crawled up into this cornfield, inch by inch. I mean, it took us a while. Crossed another fence, got in, got to the base of our tree, got up the tree without him or the doe seeing us. I mean, it was astounding how we did that. We get up here, and we've been here probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes, watching him. He'd bed down, she'd bed down, yada yada. Next thing you know, a little buck comes out of nowhere, she busts out, now they're down in this bottom, and we can't hear nothing or see anything, so we're just, it's a waiting game now. Still, I mean, he's only 150 yards from us in a wide open CRP field. CRP is only like knee high, so it's not even that tall. And look, we've got standing corn right here, so she might come up here tonight. Who knows? 
As the light began to fade, the big eight that we eventually named Ted stepped out with a doe. So now it was a race between shooting light and the doe, which one would come first. Ultimately, shooting light won. She did bring him by us at like 80 yards, but that was it. The night ended and I'm pretty optimistic still. That's multiple shooters in one tree on the same farm and I can't ask for any more than that. Enough was enough. We decided to get down, pull the stands, run down there, hang them, get in the stands, and we sat the rest of the afternoon. Well, that's what we got. Casey's up there, hanging the stand. We just took him down from up there, brought him down here, found the tree that's gonna work the best. We are in the spot where all the deer go by, right out here over my shoulder. They all come right by here. There's an overhanging branch. 
big scrape on it, so we're gonna hang it, set it. Should have it up here in the next 10, 15 minutes. We'll be sitting here soon. Well, we're up here. We're tucked in, eh? Yeah, we're buried in here. This is where we've been wanting to get. It's where we need to be, man. This spot's awesome. Every one of those deer that we've seen has gone right by here. Yep. The only thing is, is our visuals change immensely. Oh yeah. Like, we're here now. That's all we can see. And with that being said, I think we should call this spot the hot corner. Oh yeah. It's perfect. You gotta be on the balls of your feet in here. This is it, dude. This is where you're gonna smack one. And that big deer, if he's still here, he's in that in, in this ditch that we're in, only a hundred yards. 150 yards away probably so I'm gonna sit down in my comfy millennium and strap in. Coming into this morning, we knew it was going to be a picture-perfect morning. It was 30 degree drop in temperature, so it's 18 degrees. And I'm not going to lie to you, I had put so much pressure on myself for this day because we knew that this cold front was going to kick and we thought the deer were going to be moving everywhere. There's a doe on a spike underneath of us. They're coming down in case she's running right at us. So a lot of a bow hunter season is made up of highs and lows, ups and downs. Coming into this morning with the weather, the wind, and the situation of us moving the stand and knowing the Hambino is here, I was on a high. Come 8.30, I was on a low. To watch him walk under Tiny Dancer, the stand that we've been in for the last six days, it was a shot to the gut. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really mad because I put so much pressure on myself because I knew we were gonna leave in the next couple days to go back to Kansas. Our game plan was to hunt to 11 o'clock. We needed to get down anyway. Casey was on his last battery. We were, they were dying like crazy, it was so cold out. So we were gonna get down at 11 and be in no later than 12.30. And that's what we did. Oh, well, we're back up. It's, I think it's 12.30. I mean, we slipped down for about an hour. Yeah, like an hour, hour and a half. We knew we had to get back in here. I mean, it's just so upsetting, honestly, from after this morning. It's just frustrating more. We sit here, move the stand yesterday from Tiny Dancer over to here, and then the great Hambino <laughs> walks right underneath of it. I don't even know what you do with that. It's it's not like he knew we weren't there, and I gotta get that through my head. It's just. Yeah, you act like he knew we were here, coming here, so he went there. Yeah, and that's just the frustrating part about it, but... Well, that's what it feels like, but it's not. I mean, we had all the confidence in the world in this tree yesterday. I know. We watched every shooter we've seen in here go by this tree. And so, somebody's going to come by here tonight, I, today, sometime. I, You know, it's it's the rut. Anything can happen, and he could come back. I mean, he could lose that dough and come back. You just never oh. know. It's 29 degrees. It doesn't feel like it, but it's it's like a comfortable 29. Mind you, I look like Ralphie right now. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> Christmas story. Yeah. 
Well, but, uh, let's get buckled in here and like just set it out and see what happens. He's done. He's done. The great Hambino. We've had that deer for the last two days. It is 3.30 in the afternoon. He had absolutely no idea that we were sitting here. None. He does now. We got him. We got him. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's down right there. I just saw blood pouring out of him coming up, going up that hill. He bumped over that terrace like 30 yards left of that cedar. Yeah. And I saw his I saw him go right out of right out of sight. Oh, oh man. I didn't think you were gonna stop him. When you bleed it, I was like, oh my god. Here I it had comes. to. Because here it comes. We, obviously we don't have a lane down there. We had to kind of create one. There's that hedge apple tree. Yeah. I think I might have touched a limb when I went through there, but when I pulled back. I, I, I buzzed him at 17 yards and I panicked and I just double punched to get the fixed pins and I put my 20 out and I just hammered him. Well, you hammered him because he is down 75 yards from us. The great ham bean. No. is so big. Oh man. I, do I gotta check my... No. Did you cut me I, open? I, I didn't buzz you. <laughs> Dude, I tried staying so tucked right here. I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna shoot by me. Oh my God. We made it happen, dude. That's what it's for right there. We made it happen. We're having a heck of a year. Chris killed yesterday. He's on his way back to Michigan. We just killed and guess where we're going? We're going to Kansas. Hey, Cody killed two days ago. And Cody killed two days ago. That's a bang, bang, bone. And we got Kansas on the agenda. But we need to get our hands on the great ham <laughs> bean. No. Oh. I can't stop taking That is 100% humanimal right there, man. Oh. Well, we're at the base of the tree and shedding some layers, regrouping here, getting ready for the recovery. The fun stuff. This is going to be exciting, to okay, say the least. Let me see here. Change lenses. Hey, guess what? What? You know what I didn't do? Hit record. Double punch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. I'm live action. All right, let's do this. Okay. Oh, my gosh, I can't do this. Yeah, I mean we're right there. If you can see that, okay. And he was standing right, right here. So I shot right through there. He's just up on that terrace. Can't believe this, man. Oh my gosh! He's gonna be right over this hill.
Oh my god. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that deer. He is so much bigger than I thought he was. He's awesome, isn't he? My, my heart is going a mile a minute right now. This deer is so big. I cannot, I'm in awe. What do you got for that deer, dude? Let's count him up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I would say 16 squirrel, 17, didn't see that one. That is the great Hambino. The great Hambino right here. This deer is such a horse. Are you kidding me right now? I, I cannot believe this. We've had two days with this deer. Two days. And we, he walked onto the stand that we moved this morning and we were down. And he walked by our new stand, our hang and bang set at 3.30 a day and we hammered him. Look the, at that right side. The right side is so big. Look at how unique that is. Oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Dude, thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate it. it. You earned him. This is a long time coming. You and I put so much time in this last week. So got a can tag in your pocket. You, I was punched.